the Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, hearing God's Word, and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. and ever. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and, and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All of these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Glorious things are told of you, city of God. His foundation upon the holy mountains, the Lord loves. The gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob. 
Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God, and of Zion they shall say, one and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the most high Lord. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born here, and all shall sing in their festive dance. My home is within you. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Happy Virgin, you gave birth to the Lord, O Blessed Mother of the Church. You warm our hearts with the spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopes, and St. Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with a common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was a preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of the week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lens into his side. And immediately blood and water flowed out. The Gospel of the Lord. This reading today reminded me of something that happened many years ago in the 1920s when um, a community of nuns, members of the religious order of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Sisters of the Cross of the, of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, contemplatives who spend day and night in prayer, praying for priests. As a result of the Mexican Revolution and the persecution of the Catholic Church in Mexico, um, there were 16 of them taken 
to um, an island that they were dedicated for prisoners because of their faith. And precisely those, those islands are called Islas Marias. Precisely to celebrate Mary, you know, the Blessed Mother, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. But what is uh, remarkable is how these ladies, because following Jesus, they were sent to that prison. These islands were considered the worst place to send prisoners. And we see here again in this gospel that these ladies, particularly the Blessed Virgin Mary, were at the foot of the cross. Well, Pope Francis chose for the universal church to call this day a feast day for Mary, mother of the church. Mary had seen the disciples as fearful before, during and after the resurrection. Then only to see them become a vibrant, energetic group of apostles later. Mary knew in her heart that her son's work was not finished on the cross. So we see Mary's life as a sign of hope, never to give up, even when she witnessed her son's death on the cross. Somehow she knew Jesus' mission was not over. In spite of that, he said, it is finished. But she, as a mother, she was able to understand that the work was going to continue. And much work needed to be done in the church. So we too, like Mary, never give up when we feel all is lost. We are not discouraged. Isn't it interesting that somewhere in our thinking we believe that if we pray, if we worship God faithfully, and if we keep all his commandments, that we will be protected, exempt from all the pains and trials of life. If this was not true for Mary, why would it be true for us? So as then when trials occur. Is this how God rewards those who love him, those who have been most faithful? Is this what you might have ex to expect if you commit yourself own life to God? The answer might be, yeah, maybe yes. Yeah. Mary's heart must have been broken at the foot of the cross. But even though her heart was broken, she believed that God had a plan. She trusted in God. The Holy Spirit led her step by step. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there are many mothers who know the agony of a child's suffering. I have been in hospitals with mothers whose children are sick and dying. I have worked, visited, and prayed with mothers who have children with special needs. I have seen mothers care for their wounded sons and daughters. I have prayed for mothers who couldn't visit their mother before they died of the COVID-19. 
this last last weekend, one of these ladies called me over the phone. I met that family in 1984 in, when I was in a parish, St. Joseph's Parish. And she cannot see her mother because of COVID. So like Mary, I know their pain and suffering. Mary has walked in their shoes. There are so many hurting mothers in the world who still manage to love God like Mary and to understand that there is more to the story and they commit themselves to help. All like Mary experience the cross. Pain, unfortunately, is an undeniable, unavoidable part of life. But faithful mothers know that they are not alone. They know that the Spirit of God is within them, that something is happening within them that give them strength to do something in those situations. They are like Mary, share their pain and support for each other. So as Jesus gave his mother to John and John to his mother, behold your mother, behold your son, Jesus gives others to us to be our family, for support, for love. Are you one who loves God, even in the midst of your pain? Let Mary remind you of a wonderful truth today. As long as you know Jesus, your story isn't over. He didn't finish the story. We carry on the story. Endure your cross if that is your lot today. Just don't forget one important fact. Sunday is coming. The Blessed Mother assumed not only that moment in her heart, in her life, but he assumed all of us, children of God. And she is with us in our journey of faith. Mother Mary, take us under your protection and open us to the action of the Holy Spirit. St. John, obtain for us the grace of taking Mary into our lives as you did. Help us to realize with you that we are sons and daughters of the Blessed Mother. And that Jesus thought of us when he was on the cross. She is the mother of the church. In our archdiocese, we're going to celebrate in a few minutes something that is going to be very meaningful. In 10 years, we have not established a new parish. And precisely this new parish will have the title of today's feast day. Mary, Mother of the Church. To remind the whole archdiocese that we are children of God, and that Jesus actually make, made this truth 
alive for us when he was on the cross. And he gave us Mary as our mother. So the Archdiocese today is in gratitude. And we are mindful that we have a mother. And that mother is the mother of Jesus. And that the Lord is going to take care of us. And though we're going through the pandemic and the violence and injustices that they are outrageous. That, that they call upon heaven to intervene. We know that the Blessed Mother, Mother of the Church, is with us and cares for us. So we continue. And may we be part of the story. If we don't give up, may the Holy Spirit give us the strength, the vision, the understanding of what God is doing. Because the plan of God it is always good, even when sometimes we experience pain and sorrow. Sunday is coming. Acknowledging our neediness, we turn to God and offer him our prayers accompanied with the Blessed Virgin Mary. For Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Spirit draw them together to devote themselves with one accord to prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For government officials, May God give them eyes of mercy and hearts of truth to seek the common good and care for those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all mothers, especially expectant mothers facing uncertainty or poverty, may God give them the grace they need to love, lovingly welcome their children into our world as Mary did. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For young people in our faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life, may they be confident in our love, support, and prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this community gather here in worship, may the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary help us grow in grace, fortitude, and fear of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our loved ones who have died, in particular those who have passed from the coronavirus, may they find eternal rest in heaven with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Let us pray for the new pastor and for the parishioners, those who are going to worship, celebrate the sacraments, hear the word of God, and do works of mercy in our new parish, Mary Mother of the Church. May they be faithful. May they be beacons of the virtues of the Blessed Mother to take care of others and to have a deep love for Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of, of the earth and work of human hands. You will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, you will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by His power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her may be all united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary, receiving your word in her immaculate heart, she was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb and give him birth to the Creator. She nurtured the beginnings of the church Standing beside the cross, she received the testament of divine love and took to herself as sons and daughters all those who by the death of Christ are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you have promised, she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love and watches in kindness over the church's homeward steps until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim you. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be brought for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. So remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy bishop, and all the clergy and all your people. So remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Mother, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look at the fate of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, 
and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. by proclaiming the gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, turn to you, O Mother, See with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your son to have mercy on us, bringing healing to those infected and protection to all your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to accompany and care for the entire world in the wake of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you, and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. San Antonio of Padua. Amen. And we remember that in the midst of all this darkness, chaos, complications in life, God is providing a new parish for us. Mary, Mother of the Church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.